السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد الله سبحانه وتعالى ساز إن سورة الفرقان وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say oh my lord truly my people have taken this Quran as something to be abandoned. Truly my nation, my people, have taken this Quran as something to be discarded. This is a very powerful complaint from the Prophet ﷺ. He's expressing his sorrow and sadness at the Quraysh's attitude toward the Quran and revelation. The Prophet ﷺ will complain to Allah that my people, my nation, has abandoned the Qur'an. This revelation that Allah has revealed to me to warn and explain what lies ahead for mankind. They refused to listen to it because they feared that they would be attracted to its message. Stubbornly, they refused to consider its message, which would have guided them to the truth and given them light. When the Prophet ﷺ would recite the Qur'an to the people of Quraysh, they would ignore him, they would walk away, and they would even put their fingers in their ears. Others would distract people and make them stop listening to the Qur'an. As a matter of fact, the leadership of Quraysh and those who opposed the Prophet ﷺ tried everything they could to stop people from listening to the Qur'an. They would make all types of false claims and accusations. They would say that he composed these words himself. That this is a product of human effort. That the Prophet ﷺ has composed and written these words himself. Or he composed them with the help of others. They would say that the Qur'an is a compilation of old fairy tales. They would say that these are the words of a poet, a magician, a sorcerer a fortune teller, or even a madman. So the Prophet ﷺ will complain to Allah, Ya Rabbi, inna qawmi ittakhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. That, O oh my Lord, my people have taken this Qur'an as something to be abandoned, as something to be discarded. So the Prophet ﷺ, he's complaining about the attitude of Quraysh to, uh, towards the Qur'an, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now some mufassirun mention that although this verse is referring to the non-believers of his time, it can also be referring to us as Muslims. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is going to complain about us. He's going to complain about you and I, his followers, who abandoned the Qur'an and took it as something to be discarded. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, مَنْ لَمْ يَقْرَئِ الْقُرْآنِ فَقَدْ هَجَرَ Whoever doesn't recite the Qur'an has abandoned it. وَمَنْ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ فَلَمْ يَتَدَّبَّرْهُ فَقَدْ هَجَرَ And whoever recites the Qur'an, but they don't reflect on it, they have abandoned it. وَمَنْ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ وَتَدَبَّرَهُ وَلَمْ يَعْمَلْ بِهِ فَقَدْ هَجَرَ And whoever recites the Qur'an and reflects on its meanings but doesn't act upon it, has abandoned it. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he's highlighting that there are different levels of abandonment of the Qur'an. The first level is not reciting it. How many Muslims are there? How many people are there in our communities who you know who I know that don't recite the Qur'an at all. That perhaps the only time they recite the Qur'an or they listen to the Qur'an is during the month of Ramadan or perhaps at a funeral, perhaps at a wedding. Throughout the rest of the year, there's no connection whatsoever to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, they respect it, they love it, they revere it. Perhaps they put it on the highest shelf in their home, but that's about it. That's the extent of their relationship with the Qur'an. That's abandonment. 
And the Prophet ﷺ might complain about us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. The second level is that maybe people read the Qur'an, but they're just doing it for the sake of barakah. They're reading without reflecting. They're reading without understanding. How many people do we know that have a regular habit of reciting the Qur'an? Perhaps very regularly, very consistently, but they have no clue, they have no idea what the Qur'an is saying. They have no clue, no idea what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them. They don't engage with the Qur'an and reflect on it. That's also a type of abandonment. And then there's another level where perhaps a person reads the Qur'an. They even reflect on the meanings, they understand it, but they don't put it into practice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from abandoning the Qur'an at any level. The Qur'an has rights upon us. The first right the Qur'an has upon us is that we are supposed to recite it. Not a day should pass by where we don't open up a copy of the Qur'an and read something from it. The second right is that we understand it. We actually understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. And along with that understanding, we engage in reflection. We engage with the Qur'an. And the third right is that we put the Qur'an into practice. That we should build our lives, every single aspect of our lives, upon the guidance, the teachings, and the principles of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the tawfiq, the ability to do so. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله